going from Yash to Boomerang to come home for a furlough. Yeah. We always brought home as many suitcases as we could because we always wanted to take back as many suitcases as we could. Fill them up with peanut butter, ranch dressing, and syrup, you know, stuff like that. We couldn't buy it over there. And oftentimes, uh, a, a train compartment, not the new train that you saw there, those were all open spaces. But in the older trains, they had compartments. And the compartments, some of the trains had six seats in the compartment, some of the trains had eight seats in the compartment. And a lot of times when we would go buy tickets, we would only buy the four tickets we needed for our family. Sometimes we'd buy the extra of two seats if there were six seats there. We'd buy and just go ahead and pay for the other two seats. We'd have the whole apartment to ourselves because we had 12 suitcases we were bringing back. Uh, but sometimes if it, was, uh, if it had eight seats, we would just buy four, and the person that Yash at the train place where we bought the tickets, they would just go ahead and block off the other four seats for us. We didn't have to pay for them, but they would cancel those tickets out so we could have the whole compartment to ourselves. Well, this one time we were coming back home from furlough, and we had uh, a couple of the suitcases on the racks on the wall, and then we had suitcases in the floor. And uh, Rachel and the girls and I were minding old business, getting ready to come back home. You know, it's always an exciting time getting to see family and friends and so forth. Well, the train conductor comes by. This is after we were on the train. Now, in Romania, they don't take the tickets when you get on the train. Uh, they wait until you're on the path. So if you're on, if you're, uh, on the wrong train, you're in tough luck. So uh, the train conductor came by after we were on the train for about an hour, hour and a half or so. Uh, to punch our tickets as I explained to the kids, and he saw our suitcases sitting there on the floor. And he said, you can't have suitcases in the floor. They have to be on the racks. And uh, we said, well, okay, we can get them up off the floor. And he said, he, he uh, explained to us as far as he was concerned that we were violating the rules by having so many suitcases. Uh, nobody else could be in the compartment. Uh, and I said, explain to the woman in Yash blocked off those other seats, and, and we normally do that. And he said, I don't care what the woman in Gosh uh, said, you can't have all those suitcases here. And so, uh, you're going to have to pay a fine. Well, I, uh, I told him, I said, if we're going to pay a fine, we'll pay it. But it's after we get to Bucharest, and after we lay all the suitcases. So what I was telling him is, I ain't paying you anything right now. If you're going to get money out of me, you're going to get money out of me after we get there. And we weigh everything. So we go back and forth for quite a while, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. He pulls out his manual, you know, and he shows us, you know, each suitcase can only weigh so much. Uh, you can only have so many suitcases and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. So he says, I'll come back in a little while. Well, the poor conductor made two mistakes. Number one... He think the fight was Rachel. <laughs> he picked the fight with somebody who spoke Romanian. Now he knew that we were foreigners, but he, he did not count on the fact that we could argue with him in Romanian. The second mistake he walked, he made was that he showed us the manual. Now I already knew the rules for the suitcases because uh, the airlines, you know, there's a weight limit on luggage on the airlines, and I weighed every one of those suitcases probably about 10 times, trying to say, okay, we can squeeze a little bit more on this suitcase, we got to take something out of this suitcase. Well, I knew how much those suitcases weighed. And so Rachel started doing the math in her head, and she said, well, you know what, we, we are under the weight limit for these suitcases. Now, part of his complaint was also that the suitcases were on the floor. So we put the suitcases up on the racks that would fit up there, and then the other suitcases we set up on the seats that were already empty. So we had four seats for us, and then we put the other suitcases up on the other seats. So he came back through, I don't know, a couple of hours later. It was a seven-hour train ride, seven-and-a-half-hour train ride. He came back a couple hours later, and we could hear him walking down the hallway. It's a narrow hallway outside of the compartment. So he's walking down the hallway, and we hear him. So Rachel goes out there, and she said, the problem's resolved. He said, what do you mean? She said, the problem's resolved. She said, the manual says that, he, that we are entitled to so many suitcases, and each suitcase had, uh, could, all, could not weigh more than so many kilograms. She said, you come in here and look, we've got the suitcases off the floor. We don't have much the suitcases weigh. Problem solved. He said, why are you bothering me? And he never said anything else. 
when Satan attacks us, our recourse is to know what he's doing and to know what the manual says. The manual, of course, on our way to heaven is the Bible. And the more we know the Bible, the better we are to handle the things that Satan throws at us. So this week at Bay Nation Bible School, we've got classes for adults as well. And we're going to study, and, and the, the teachers for the adult classes are men in this congregation. Uh, the last several years, we've got preachers from other congregations to come in and teach class, but this year we're getting used to our own men. And, and each man is going to be teaching in the class, and, and I got to thinking about the Apostle Paul. How the Apostle Paul did the same things that we're going to be talking about this week. Now, the lessons are not about Paul, but Paul got on board the Kingdom Express. And he did that by following the Bible. So I want you to look with me and think about the Apostle Paul as we, as we see what he did to get on board the Kingdom Express. Now, see it read earlier from Acts chapter 22 where the Apostle Paul said that he had persecuted the way. Now that word way was a word that the first century Christians used to describe Christianity. Probably coming from the fact that Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And so we would say, for this week at least, that the way is the kingdom express. It's that train going to heaven. Now Paul, in order to get on board that train, here are four things that Paul did. First of all, Paul chose to be different. In Galatians chapter 1 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul talks about the fact that he was a Jew before he became a Christian. And he says in that passage, I was exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. Paul was very zealous as a Jew. So much so that it led him to persecute and kill Christians because he thought that they were teaching false. But then when Paul came across Jesus, and Paul had that meeting with Jesus in Acts chapter 9, Paul began to think that he needed to become a Christian. And Paul chose to leave his past. He chose to leave the religion of his father. He chose to leave the religion of his people. He chose to leave the religion of his friends. Because he realized that Christianity was not necessarily a new religion. It was the fulfillment of his old religion. Now, in Acts chapter 22, see it read the first uh, several verses of that chapter. It's in Paul's defense before his people, the Jewish people, trying to explain to them why he became a Christian in the first place. At the very end of that speech, verse 22 of Acts 22, the people heard him say that God wanted him to go preach to the Gentiles and the Jewish people had had enough. And when Paul said that, they stomped up their ears and they said, away with this man from the earth that is not fit for him to live. Paul chose to be different. Paul chose to do what he believed was right, even though everybody else was doing something different. So when we get on board the Kingdom Express, we're going to have to make the choice, even as adults, that we are willing to be different from the world. The second thing about Paul is that he made wise choices. Paul was very concerned about how he lived his life in front of other people. In fact, in Acts chapter 24 and verse 12, this is Paul again defending himself, but this time he was in front of the governor, Governor Felix. And in Acts 24 and verse 12, Paul said, I preached in the temple every day but I never created a riot. I never broke the law. See, Paul made wise choices. Paul was able to perceive the situation and tell himself, here is how I need to approach it. I don't need to say things that will unnecessarily make people mad, but I also don't need to whitewash the truth just to save my own skin. Paul made wise choices that helped him live a strong Christian life. And in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians in Thessalonica, and he says, you know how I live my life in front of you, uprightly and blamelessly and beyond reproach. 
So Paul lived a, an exemplary life in front of other people, knowing that it would help them accept the gospel that he was preaching. And so Paul chose to be different. Paul made wise choices in his life. The third thing that we see in Paul as he gets on board the Kingdom Express is that Paul had good friends. Now, when we study this list of vacation Bible school, the point is going to be choose friends who help you grow closer to Jesus. Choose friends who love Jesus the way you love Jesus and who want to see you get closer to Him. And that is just as true for Christians as, as for adults as it is for children. The Apostle Paul's friendship with Christians began in Acts chapter 9. It was Ananias, a Christian, who came to Saul. And he said, Saul, you need to obey the gospel. That is the most important thing that a friend will do, either for us or that we will do for other people, is to say, you need to obey the gospel. You need to obey Jesus Christ if you want to spend eternity with Him in heaven. And then in Acts chapter 9, uh, we have uh, the record of Barnabas. Barnabas was another good friend of Saul, of Paul. Paul had spent some time in Arabia after he became a Christian, and he comes back home to Jerusalem. And the Christians in Jerusalem are still afraid of Paul because they knew what kind of Paul, uh, person Paul was before, that he killed Christians. And they're really leery of accepting him as a member of their congregation because he killed Christians. But Barnabas comes along. And Barnabas puts his arm around Saul and Barnabas says, I believe what Paul said. That he was converted, that he's not the same person anymore. And I believe we need to give Paul a chance. And so very early in Paul's walk as a Christian, he started off with two very important friends as Christians. One who taught him the gospel and one who... Uh, uh, helped him become a part of the local congregation there in Jerusalem. And after that, Paul's numbers of friends just multiplied exponentially. Paul had friends all over the place. He had friends who encouraged him. He had friends who picked him up when he was down. He had friends who prayed for him. He had friends who stayed with him when he was in jail. He had friends who were there with him at the very end of his life. Paul chose good friends. Even as an adult, he spent time with people who would help him serve Jesus Christ. And then fourth and finally, Paul always put Jesus first. Paul always put Jesus first. It began with him saying, okay, I've got to leave my old religion and I need to accept this new religion of Christianity. Paul put Jesus first. And if we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that, that series of verses there where Paul says, this is what I want to do as a Christian. He talks about the number of times that he was shipwrecked, the number of times that he was beaten, and the number of times that he was whipped, and the number of times that he was shipwrecked. All of those things that he went through because he put Jesus first. And it all had to do with what he was teaching. He said, I've got to teach what Jesus told me to teach. And it brought a lot of physical abuse on him. Paul put Jesus first when it came to living a life of comfort and ease. He could have said, well, I'll let people go ahead and stay Jews and just accept some of the things about Christianity. Maybe we can compromise, you know. No, that wasn't Paul. Paul taught the gospel as Christ revealed it to him, and he put Jesus first. He put Jesus first above his old religion. He put Jesus first above his family. He put Jesus first above his old friends. And again, he put Jesus first above the things that he was experiencing himself. Comfort and ease. It would have been a whole lot easier for Paul if he had just stayed a Jew. He would have been uh, one of the most popular Jewish teachers of all time if he had stayed a Jew. But he gave that up. Because that wasn't right. And then again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 